you can just step right up and get started and just ignore me. Yes, we are. Sun, three little birds by my doorstep singing a sweet song of melody, joy, and truth. This is my message to you. Saying, Don't worry about the thing, every little thing's gonna be all right. Saying, Don't worry about a thing. Cause every little thing's gonna be all right. Woke up this morning to the rising sun, three little birds by my window, they're singing a sweet song of melody, pure and true. This is my message to you. They're saying, don't worry about a thing. Cause every little thing's gonna be all right. They're saying, don't worry about a thing. Cause every little thing's gonna be all right it's gonna be all right Check one, two, check eight. Check one, two.
Check one, two, check three, check one, two. Check one, two, check three. Well, hello everyone, hope you can hear me better. First one's never that great anyways. Myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Wake up to the sound of music, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be, won't you let it be? Whisper your words of wisdom, let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be, won't you let it be? Whisper your words of wisdom, let it be. Broken-hearted people living in the world agree there will be an answer. Let it be. For though they may be parted, there is still a chance that they will see. There will be an answer. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Won't you let it be? There will be an answer, let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be, won't you let it be? There will be an answer, let it be. Wake up to the sound of music, and Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And when the night is cloudy, there is still a light that shines on me. Shine until tomorrow, let it be. Let it be, let it be. Let it be, won't you let it be? Whisper your words of wisdom, let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be, won't you let it be? Whisper those words of wisdom. Let it be, let it be, let it be, won't you let it be? Whisper those words of wisdom, let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be, won't you let it be? Whisper those words of wisdom, let it be.
Well, who out there? I see you, but I can't hear you. I see trees of green and roses too. I see them bloom for me and for you. And I think to myself, What a wonderful world. I see skies of blue, clouds of white, bright blessed day in the dark sacred night. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow so pretty in the sky. Also on the faces of people walking by, I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. Cry, I watch them go. I learn so much more than I will ever know. And I think to myself, it's what a wonderful world. Colors of the rainbow so pretty in the sky. But also on the faces of people walking by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, How do you do? They're really saying, I love you. It's those skies of blue, the clouds of white, the bright blessed day for the dark sacred night. And I think to myself, it's what a wonderful world. In those trees of blue, red roses too, I see them blue for me and for you. And I think to myself, it's what a wonderful world. Good morning. Happy birthday. Good morning and happy birthday, Downtown Disciples. We're so glad you're here. And uh, we're trying a new thing. And when you try a new thing, sometimes everything goes smooth, but not usually. So thank you so much for bearing with us. Um, we're, uh, we're getting this technology thanks to Casey. We had a backup plan with the sound system. 
uh, we did test the radio frequency uh, earlier in the week and it was working fine. So I apologize that the radio frequency is not working well for you today. We're so thankful that you're here to celebrate our fifth birthday. Welcome to Downtown Disciples. We are a progressive faith community doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly together. We are LGBTQ affirming and we proclaim Black Lives Matter. We say that every time we gather because it matters to us. And it really matters to us that you're here with us to celebrate our birthday. I see some cars decorated, woohoo! We do have prizes for decorated cars, so that'll be exciting. Also, we wanna welcome our virtual community on Zoom and Facebook, and we have prizes for you too. So if you made a happy birthday sign or a Pentecost sign, uh, make sure that you uh, post a picture of it so that we can uh, that are you for winning in the drawings and we'll do that a little later in the worship i want to thank uh dang felton for being creative with us today and trying this new format of drive-in church and for blessing us with beautiful music mary beth martis lacroix is going to be with us shortly as well so we will be doubly blessed and um also want to thank sherry uh, Aiden, who created our new beautiful t-shirts for our birthday. If you did not get one, um, we did order a few extras. So let us know if you'd like to have, if you'd like to have one. And uh, there's going to be a couple of times in the worship service that you'll be invited to respond from your cars by flashing your lights or turning on your windshield wipers or waving or giving a little honk. And so we invite you to make it fun and participate in that way. For those of you who are online, uh, you can chat and participate that way. And you can just type in Hong Kong or whatever you'd like to respond to help us celebrate Pentecost and our birthday today. So at this time, I'm going to invite us into a moment of silence uh, just to listen to the birds, to rest in the presence of the one who loves us. And then um, I'll say amen. And when I say amen, I invite you to flash your lights, turn on your wipers, or give a little honk as, a, as your amen in response. Then uh, Dang is going to bless us with the spirit song. So please sing along in your car if you know the words or online if you know the words, and then Mariah will come and bless us with the call to worship. Let us be still and know that we are loved. Amen. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, um, before I have Jane come back up, I forgot to tell you, we also are going to have one more announcement later in the worship, and that is um, we're going to uh, respond and let you know how we did on our matching birthday campaign. We want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to your generosity and everyone who contributed to our matching birthday campaign and to those um, who, woo, there we go, to those who wanted uh, to participate but were not able to, we also thank you for your prayers and for being part of our community uh, because together we are the body of Christ. So I'll be excited to give you a little update on, on that about halfway through uh, the worship service today. And now I'll turn it back over to Dang for the spirit song.
Well, hello again. Thanks for having me, everybody. I'm glad to be at Downtown Disciples' fifth birthday. Spirit require of us to do justice and love in kindness. In our hearts, as we walk, humble our tongue hand in hand, we can make it better. What does spirit require of us to do justice and love in kindness? In our hearts as we walk, humble in our talk, hand in hand, we can make it better. We are a movement of wholeness when the world falls apart. We are one. And all are welcome. What does spirit require of us to do justice and love in kindness? In our hearts as we walk, humble in our talk, hand in hand, we can make it better. We are a movement of wholeness when the world falls apart. We are one and all are welcome. We are the movement for wholeness. We are one, and all are welcome. What does spirit require of us to do justice with love and kindness? In our hearts as we walk, humble in our talk, hand in hand, we can make it better. We are a movement of wholeness when the world falls apart. We are and all are welcome. Good morning. My name is Mariah Hines, and I will be um, leading our chef for um, us this morning. Um, as um, you know, this is usually a call and response, which can be hard when we're on Zoom and Facebook and in a parking lot. Um, so when I raise my arms, I invite you to respond with, we are the spilled body of Christ, okay? 
we are the spirit-filled body of Christ. And then at the end, in lieu of an alleluia, I'll be invite you to honk or flash your lights or um, do your white grace. Join me now in this call to worship. For such a time as this, we are the spirit-filled body of Christ. In pandemic, fear, and isolation, we are the spirit-filled body of Christ. In such a time as Pentecost, we are the spirit-filled body of Christ. Holy Spirit, breath of life, we need your power, presence, and healing. We need one another. We are the spirit-filled body of Christ. Empower us on our birthday and every day. Breathe and blow among us with fiery justice and healing joy. We are the spirit-filled body of Christ. Doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly together. Alleluia. Amen. <laughs> We love your honking and your lights and your wipers. It helps us feel more connected, like we are um, actually in the same space. It's been hard uh, doing this virtually, and we are thankful for the technology and thankful to be able to do that. But it's also fun to be able to hear your honks and, and see you in your, in your cars. And thank you to our virtual community as well. At this time, uh, we are going to be creative together. We invite one another to create prayer together. And the way that we do this is by uh, chatting or texting uh, something about our life with one another. So maybe you have a joy that you want to celebrate. Maybe somebody ha else has a birthday today uh, in addition to Downtown Disciples. Or you had one this week or you have one coming up. Or perhaps you have a anniversary or a wedding or a graduation uh, or just you're joyful about being able to be out and and hear the birds. So we invite you to share not only your joys and celebrations, but also your aches and pains and frustrations and fears and angers, because we believe that when we share something of our lives with each other, then we're uh, creating a space within us for the Spirit of God to move in and to fill us with peace and comfort and strength and, and that there might be more peace in the world because we have prayed. There might be more peace in us, more love in us, more justice in the world because we have prayed. So we're going to uh, give you a few minutes to do that. Um, Dang will bless us with some instrumental music. And what we invite you to do is to text those uh, prayers, those joys and concerns and aches and sorrows to our church cell phone, which Mariah has, and that number is 515-244-0054. And if you're watching on the screen um, through Zoom or Facebook, that number is there for you, 515-244-0054. Or you can uh, chat on Facebook as well. And uh, we will just give each other um, a little time to share something of our lives. If we were in our worship space, uh, then this would be a time that we would pass around a basket and we would collect our prayers up and we would share those prayers with each other our prayer offerings. We would also pass a basket and we would put in our tithes and our offerings, the work of our hands and our, and our lives so that we can continue to be in ministry together. And uh, so we invite you to do that as well as you are so moved by the spirit. Um, and this is where I, I would like to share again and say thank you so much uh, for your faithfulness to our ministry. It allows us to continue to thrive in downtown Des Moines. Both your tithes and your offerings, your weekly gifts, and the birthday match 
So here's where I want to tell you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Not only did we meet our $15,000 goal, but we surpassed it. Um, we are right now about $17,425. So, <laughs> thank you. Every dollar makes a difference. You can still give to the birthday campaign today. I know that we promised that that would be available through the end of the day. So please know that you can still do that. All of your gifts matter. And we are thankful uh, for each and every one of you. Thank you. 
Amen. Thank you so much, Dan. At this time, I'd like to speak uh, directly with the children. This one's not on. Here we go. How's that? Great. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to speak directly to the children, children of all ages. We're so glad you're here to help us celebrate our birthday. I want you to know that um, we've got, I hope you've seen all the balloons up here. And just a minute ago, the wind blew through here. And uh, we expected a little wind today. After all, it's Pentecost. And Pentecost is a time when the church celebrates the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is kind of like wind. It blows and you can feel it and you can see the result. But you can't actually see it. So you can see the wind blowing the balloons and blowing things around but you can't really see the wind itself. You can feel it. And at Pentecost, we celebrate that that spirit is alive in the world and it's in us and the spirit comes and helps us in our sadness and in our joy. It empowers us and strengthens us in our times of difficulty. So I know that this has been a really hard time and uh, you probably had to do a lot of things differently than you've ever had to do before. And I want you to know that the spirit of God, even if you can't see it, is with you. And it is blowing all around you and even inside you. And it wants you to know that you are not alone and that you are loved and you are important. And so today on the birth of the church, I want you to know that you are so important to us. You are a part of our community. And even when we can't see you, you are a part of us. You are inside us and you are in our prayers. And we are thankful for you. So before you leave today, if, you're, um, if your parents would like for us to bring safely to your car some of these balloons, we could set them out beside your car and uh, where you can reach them and you can take them home with you as a reminder of our birthday and as a reminder of, um, of Pentecost and the, and the spirit blowing. And if you would rather not do that, I have some balloons that are not yet blown up. So we can do that too. Uh, so you just stick around and, and we'll fix you up with a birthday gift. And now let us do a I say you say prayer. I'm going to say something to God. And if you agree, you say it back to God. In fact, if you agree, you can honk. Ask your folks to honk. And we'll pray in this way today. Holy Spirit, we Even when we cannot see you, you are here. Even when we cannot see you, you are here. We thank you for our community. We thank you for our community. We thank you for horns to honk. For horns to honk. 
We thank you for communion to share. We thank you for communion to share. Alleluia, amen. Alleluia, amen. Thank you so much for praying with us. We are finishing our Esther story. We have been studying the story of Esther and now uh, we come to the conclusion of that story. I'm gonna read a few scripture, a little bit of scripture from that story for you today. And our hope is that this ancient story that has been passed on from generation to generation will come alive for us in our time and our, uh, in our place. On that day, King Ahasuerus gave to Queen Esther the house of Haman, the enemy of the Jews, and gave to her adopted father, Mordecai, uh, when he came before the king. And Esther had told what he was to her. The king took off his signet ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it to Mordecai. So Esther said, Mordecai over the house of Haman. Then Esther said, weeping and pleading with him to avert the evil design of Haman, the Agagite, and the plot that he had devised against the Jewish people. The king held out the golden scepter to Esther, and Esther rose and stood before the king. She said, if it pleases the king, and if I have won your favor, and if the thing seems right before the king, and I have your approval, an order be written to revoke the letters devised by Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, which he wrote giving orders to destroy the Jewish people who were in all the provinces of the king. For how can I bear to see the calamity that is coming on my people? Or how can I bear to see the destruction of my kindred? And when King Ahasuerus said to Queen Esther and to the Jew Mordecai, see, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and they have hanged him on the because he plotted to lay hands on the Jews. You may, as you guard to your people in the name of the king and seal it with the king's ring for an edict written in the name of the king and sealed with the king's ring cannot be revoked the king's secretaries were summoned and they wrote and sent to the officials of the provinces from all the land to every province in its own script and to every people in its own language and to all people in their script and their language and he wrote letters in the name of the king sealed them with the king's ring and sent them by mounted couriers riding on fast steeds read from the royal and by these letters the, the Jewish people who were in every city symbol and to defend their lives to destroy to kill and to annihilate any people or province that them with their children and women and to plunder their goods on a single day throughout all the provinces of King Ahasuerus on the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of Adair. The Jews who were in Susa gathered on the 13th day and on the 14th, and they rested on the 15th day, making that a day of feasting and gladness. Therefore, Jews of the villages who live in the open towns hold the 14th day of the month of Adar as a day for gladness and feasting a holiday on which they send gifts of food to one another. Mordecai recorded these things and sent letters to all the Jews who were in all the provinces of the king, both near and far, enjoining them that they should keep the 14th day of the month, Adar, and also the 15th day of the same month, year by year, 
as the days on which the Jews gained relief from their enemies, and as the month that had been turned for them from sorrow into gladness, and from mourning into a holiday, that they should make them days of feasting and gladness, days for sending gifts of food to one another and presents to the poor. So the Jews adopted as a custom what they had begun to do as Mordecai had written to them. Let us sit with that story in a moment of silence. Amen. On Pentecost Sunday, 2015, the Spirit blew and birthed downtown disciples as an LGBTQ affirming, Black Lives Matter proclaiming, progressive faith community. One month later, on June 26, 2015, the United States Supreme Court ruled that the Constitution guarantees the right for same-gender marriage and marriage equality became the law of the land. It was a liberating act of salvation worth celebrating. People all across this land rejoiced, and downtown disciples also celebrated. We were barely a month old, but we celebrated. We called uh, Chad Elliott, musician who we knew, and asked him to come, and he put on a live concert at the Papa John Sculpture Park for us. We ordered a uh, health box lunch in environmentally friendly containers and we ordered hundreds of them and we gave them out free to anyone over the lunch hour that day in celebration of marriage equality. Some people came on their lunch break and just picked up their lunch and left. Other people came with their blankets and spread out their blankets at the sculpture park, listened to Chad's music, ate their lunch, and celebrated this liberating judgment by the Supreme Court. It was a wonderful celebration. We had a few of those left, so we took them down the street to Central Iowa Shelter Services and um, um, with hungry folks there. So of, of people being liberated from the law that was oppressive, and it's a great memory of Downtown Disciples' first days. We had to celebrate marriage equality, and yet we knew this was not the end of injustice or violence for the queer community. We knew there was still more legislative work that needed to be done. We knew that LGBTQ people still faced oppression and injustice in the work of workplace and in the marketplace, and that there would was always that threat of violence, especially to transgender people and especially to black transgender people. They were exceptionally vulnerable to violence. In fact, just days after this monumental decision of liberation, Ashton O'Hara, a 25-year-old Black transgender and gender-fluid person from Detroit was stabbed to death and run over by a car in Michigan, a state that does not have a hate crime law that includes sexual orientation or identity. So yes, it was for, for us to celebrate marriage equality, even though we hadn't fully achieved equality justice or even safety for 
LGBTQ people and especially transgender people. We celebrated, yet there was still all around us. And what about, it's our birthday in Pentecost and the day of celebration. Pentecost was a day of celebration thousands of years ago. It was a holiday when the people gathered together from all across the land, people who spoke different languages came together to celebrate the harvest, to remember their faith and their tradition and their liberating God. Yet they had not yet achieved total liberation either. In fact, many of them were exiled and oppressed, yet they gathered. And our Christian Pentecost story tells us that when they gathered in Jerusalem, after a horrific time of violence, when Jesus was brutally crucified on a cross, right after violence, as, as his followers are still gathered together wondering, what are we going to do? How are we going to be in the world? They went to South Pentecost, even in this violent time and violent world. And when they were there, the spirit of God blew so that they began to understand one another, even across their difference, their difference of language, their difference of thinking and understanding. The spirit blew and the church, the Christian church calls Pentecost the birth of the church. So it's no coincidence that Downtown Disciples started as a community on Pentecost. It was very intentional to say that God was birthing a new expression of the church, a liberating, saving expression of the church. One that would do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly together. So we celebrate today because the spirit of God is still liberating us because we're still doing justice. So of course we celebrate a violence right here, even in Des Moines, just a few ago, Jones, a young black man was brutally attacked in a racist hate crime here in our neighborhood. Is it right for us to celebrate when young black men are being slaughtered and abused and oppressed? And not just in Des Moines. No, our neighbor to the north, George Floyd, an unarmed black man in Minnesota died from police brutality. And we know that this happens all over the United States. Racist, fatal violence persists in our neighborhood and all around the country and all around the world. So how can we celebrate liberation and salvation when we haven't yet fully experienced it? Is it right to celebrate in the midst of ongoing violence and in the midst of a pandemic? Does anyone have some ambivalence about this? As we come to the end of our Esther story, we find Esther and the Jewish people celebrating in the aftermath of horrific violence. I read part of that story today. Even though the Jewish people were liberated, even though because Esther was raised up to power for such a time as this. And she was courageous and she was creative and she was subversive and she saved her people. Still there was violence and slaughter in the saving. Because as the story goes, once an order has been signed by the king's signet ring, it cannot be undone. 
So instead, what they had to do was put out a new order with a new signing of the signet ring that said the Jewish people could defend themselves. So their celebration of liberty came after they had to fight for it. And many thousands and thousands died. And after the violence was abated, they took some days of rest. And then they celebrated. They feasted. They shared gifts with one another and with the poor. Because even though the world is still a violent place, even though they weren't fully liberated, they had been saved. Their community still existed. They had each other. The spirit of God was still moving among them. So they had to celebrate. And not only did they celebrate, but they said every year we will celebrate. And we will remember how our people were saved. We will remember Esther. And we will remember her fasting and how we fasted with her. We will remember how our God saved us. Jewish people still celebrate Purim to this day, even though it is still a dangerous place for Jewish people to live as well. And so it is for us too. We must celebrate our birthday and this fiery Holy Spirit that birthed our community because it is worthy of celebrating. It is worthy of gathering safely in our vehicles during a pandemic and virtually because this community isn't just a church. It's the resurrected body of Christ that does justice, love kindness and walks humbly together. What we celebrate is the work of the spirit that has literally saved lives and is still saving and liberating people in and through downtown disciples, in and through you, and in and through your gifts. All we have to do is listen to our birthday podcast. If you haven't listened to it yet, I highly recommend it. I cried all the way through it. All you have to do is listen to the birthday podcast to know why we must celebrate, even in a pandemic, even when violence persists all around us. We celebrate like Esther and her people, like Jewish people all around the world who celebrate Purim, like the LGBTQ community persisted to celebrate during Pride after the awful, horrible, violent attack at Pulse nightclub. It didn't cancel Pride Fest that year. The parade went on and they held their lament and grief alongside their celebration of freedom and liberty. And we do the same we hold a lament of black bodies subject to violence and death and oppression, of people who still do not have full equality in the queer community, or people all around the world who still suffer from violence in Yemen and Palestine all around the world, Syria. We must still celebrate today. Celebrate the celebration of the community that our God has gifted us with. This community that because it exists, there is less violence in the world. 
Because it exists, there is less poverty. Because we exist, there is less injustice. And so we will continue to celebrate year after year, and we will continue to work and be empowered by the Spirit until the day that justice rolls down like waters and it flows like an ever flowing stream. We will celebrate like Esther and her people. And because we celebrated, because we gave to a birthday campaign, because we shared, there will be more justice yet to come. There will be more liberty. There will be more freedom because we celebrated and gave and shared and because we are still a community. We celebrate the birth of downtown disciples and we celebrate Pentecost because as Richard Rohr says, we are no longer fragile, isolated, or helpless because the spirit birthed downtown disciples and because we are the spirit-filled, spirit-led, resurrected body of Christ, we are not alone. We are not isolated and we are not helpless. And the world is a better place because of you, because of what the spirit does in you and because we have one another. Alleluia. Amen. This time I'm going to invite um, Mariah. Good morning. Um, as we um, go through the prayers of the people, um, I invite you to respond when I raise my hands with breathe, with breathe among us. Peaceful presence, we need your calming spirit. In humility, vulnerability, and boldness, we enter this spiritual practice of prayer. Spirit in your mystery, breathe among us. Even in pandemic, we are grateful. We give thanks for sunshine and science, pets, people, and plants. For laughter, lightning bugs, birthdays, and graduations, we rejoice. Spirit in your joy, breathe among us. Spirit of lament and laughter, life is complex and emotions run deep. While some grieve, others celebrate. We, re we weep tears of joy and sorrow. Spirit of life, breathe among us. We are outraged at the violence of war, domestic violence, racism, poverty, xenophobia, homophobia, and transphobia. Even the earth is a victim of human violence. Empower us to use anger in ways that bring justice, healing, and equity. Spirit of healing, breathe among us. We fear for the healers and savers of life. Protect our environmentalists, midwives, medical professionals, and essential employees. Breathe among us. Hear the good news. The spirit of grace makes all things new. We are loved and forgiven. We are loving and forgiving. Spirit of grace, breathe among us. 
With humility and hope, we share these prayers for ourselves and our world. Prayers for someone's brother who has a life-threatening infection. Prayers for a fundamental change in our police and law enforcement. Prayers that Black lives are valued in practice and speech. Prayers for healing in our land, so together we can truly realize Martin Luther King's blessed community. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Prayers for those who protest the wrongful death of George Floyd, as well as for those who suffer from the crimes committed against them during this lifetime. Prayers for happiness, joy, and justice in a hurting world. Congratulations to all students on completing a member memorable school year and prayers for a better way forward after COVID-19 and protests with love for all life, whatever color, form, we are all connected. When one hurts, we all hurt. God in your mercy, receive our prayer. Make us your movement for wholeness in this fragmented world. Alleluia, amen. As we gather around the table, we remember that it is a feast, a celebration of liberation. We remember how Jesus, who died that violent death, was resurrected in the corporate body of Christ and all around us and in mystery that we do not even understand. That even though he died a violent death, the spirit of God said, no, this will not be the end of the story. And the spirit raised him up, his corporate body, his body, his spirit, his mystery lives on in his followers, in you and me, because love is greater than hate. And peace is greater than violence and love wins. So we gather around this table, this feast to celebrate that we are loved and forgiven. That every day is a day of opportunity to liberate one another by the power of the spirit within us and among us. And we remember how Jesus gathered together at table with hungry people, people who hungered in body and spirit. And he welcomed them, lifting them up, empowering them, inspiring them as we get inspiration and power today as we gather around the table. Remembering that Jesus took bread, everyday, ordinary, common bread. But I, get, I imagine sometimes in their feasts, they had special bread as we have today too. And I don't know what you brought in your cars with you or what you're having at home uh, in the virtual community, but we are so glad that you have brought bread to break with us. We have some birthday cupcakes up here because it's a special day. We remember that Jesus took bread, he blessed it and he broke it. He gave thanks for it. And he said to them, this is my body, given myself, all of me to all of you. So do this, do this loving and forgiving and staying together. Do this sharing and giving and healing work in the world. And when you do, 
I am celebrating with you. And when you weep, I am weeping with you. And when you are angry, I am angry with you. And when you are lamenting, I am lamenting with you. And when you are loving, I am loving with you. Do this, and when you do, I am with you. And in the same In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, the fruit of the vine, the gift of the earth. He blessed it. He gave thanks for it. And he said to them, this cup is a new promise poured out for you, but not just for you, for the whole world. And we remember that in Jesus' tradition, this was the cup that was saved for after supper. The one they saved for the liberator. Christ, for the Messiah, who would come and show them a way of peace, a way of healing, a way of salvation that was nonviolent. And Jesus drank of that cup. Then he dared to give it to all of them to drink of too, as if they too could do the Messiah's liberating, celebrating work in the world. Drink of it, all of you, he said. Remember, you are loved. You are forgiven. And that is worth celebrating. Let us enjoy feasting together as Mary Beth blesses us in song. Morning, church. This world is for the lovers and the fighters, the bold hearts and the dream igniters. This world is for the lovers and the fighters, the bold hearts and the dream igniters, bold hearts and the decolonizers, bold hearts and the dream igniters, yeah. It's going down in some pretty bad weather. You might as well just burn out of my together church. You might as well just burn out of Oh, the lovers. 
It's going down in some pretty darn bad weather. You might as well just learn how to fly. You might as well just learn how to fly and celebrate and celebrate and celebrate. We can fly and celebrate even as we look bad. Oh, we can do both. We're a complicated people. world is for the lovers and the fighters. Thank you so much, Mary Beth. Thank you so much, Mary Beth. And uh, I'm going to give the sending blessing, but I invite you to stick around because Mary Beth has more music for us. And uh, as you know, she's on fire. So she and uh, Dang are both filled with the spirit. We're so thankful to have our musicians who inspire us and empower us and liberate us with it. So as we forget, yeah. <laughs> as we uh, prepare to go about our lives and our work and our play, our celebrating and our lamenting, we go having been filled with the spirit of Christ that lives within us, among us, and around us. And may you continue to celebrate this amazing gift that God has given us in one another. Go in the peace, the power, the love, the justice, and the joy of the one who loves you best. And may you be blessed to be a blessing. Amen. <laughs> And before, um, before I turn it back over to Mary Beth to uh, bless us with music, Mariah has some uh, gifts to give for, so I'm gonna have her come up and make that announcement. If you are worshiping online and you made a sign at home, make sure you send a picture real quick so we can get you your gift as well. And uh, we are so thankful for your creativity and your joy. <laughs> all righty i was like i don't think i can identify what what these specific cars are but i'm gonna go with this um this vehicle that is white and it has a green arrow and a pink sign on it i don't know it's maybe a nissan the who the Seifert family. family okay so you guys are going to get a prize for your amazingly decorated car. Um, oh, the prize is a um, Lamy gift certificate. 
Um, our second winner out here today is going to be this van in the back, the white van. Uh, they're, they're really decked out. I love, I love the energy. You guys are also going to be uh, going home with the gift card as well. Thanks. I'm going to sing a song Pastor Debbie asked me to sing a while ago before George Floyd was murdered. Um, it works now probably better than ever. Like a small boat on the ocean, sending big waves into motion. Like how a single word can make a whole heart open. I might only have one match, but I can make an explosion of love. And all these things I didn't say to wreck you all inside my brain. I will scream them loud tonight. Can you hear my voice? This song, this is my fight song. Take back my life song. Prove I'm a right song. Yeah, 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 yeah. My power's turned on. Starting right now, I'll be strong. And I'll play my fight song. And I don't really care what nobody else believes. Cause I still got a lot of fight left in me. I'm losing friends and I'm chasing sleep. And everybody's worried about me. They say I'm in too deep. Hey, you're in too deep. And it's been two years and I miss my home. And there's a fire burning in my bones and I still believe. Yes, I still believe in all of I didn't say the wrecking balls inside my brain. I will scream them loud tonight. Can you hear my voice this time? This is my fight song. Take back my life song. Prove my mom right song. My power's turned on. Starting right now, I'll be strong. I'll sing my fight song. And I don't really care if nobody else believes. Cause I've still got a lot of fight left in me. Like a storm on the ocean. Sending big waves into motion. Like how a single word can make a whole community open. I might only have one match, but I can make an explosion of love. And all these things I didn't say, wrecking balls inside my brain. I will scream them aloud tonight. Can you hear my voice this time? This is our fight song. Take back our life song. We'll prove we're all right song. It's better than all right. Oh, 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 oh. Our power's turned on. Starting right now, let's be strong. We'll sing our fight song. And we don't really care if nobody else believes. We've still got a lot of fight left in us. You've still got a lot of fight left in you. how words change right given situations explosion of love all right it's pentecost as you all know so i gotta sing a song about the holy spirit pastor debbie wants me to remind y'all that balloons are on the peripheral of the parking lot and if you have children or at the heart of a child, perhaps. <laughs> Feel free to take the balloons as you're as you're going and being blessed. Oh, spirit, spirit of gentleness, all through the wilderness, 
Holding on free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. Coaxed up the mountains from the valleys of sleep, and over the earth you call to each thing, awake from your slumbers, oh, and rise on your wings. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, all through the wilderness. Calling and the free spirit, spirit, yes, wind, wind on the sea. You swept through the desert, you sung with the center, and you gifted your people with the law and the land. And when we were blinded, Your prophets, oh, and you open our eyes. Oh, spirit, spirit of gentleness, all through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir us from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. Walk from tomorrow, you break ancient schemes, thank God, from the bondage of sorrow, your captive dreams, dreams, our women see visions, our men clear their eyes, we call new decisions, your people the rise. Calling and free, spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir us from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, flow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit. Spirit of restlessness, stir us from placidness, we win, wind on the sea, wind on the sea. Wind on the sea. Come, Holy Spirit. I'm going to do one more. If y'all need to go, I'm not going to be, my feelings won't be hurt. Don't worry. <laughs> this is our post loop. <laughs> I'm going to do one more. Leaning on the everlasting arms. You know it. You can sing along from your cars. <clears throat> what a fellowship. What a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessed name. What a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting on leaning, leaning, deep and secure from all our lives, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting on. Let me that chorus again. Y'all can join me if you want. Leaning, leaning, here we go. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure, safe and secure from all of our feet. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting, leaning on the everlasting on. Oh, oh how sweet to walk in this way, leaning on the everlasting. Oh, how bright the path. 
We have planted peace with our God who's near, leaning on the everlasting. together now and always. Amen.